Hello everyone, my name is Pavel Manek and I'm going to tell you a few things about GraalVM. So, GraalVM is essentially a JDK which is capable of executing not only JVM based languages but also other different, different languages and uh, it means that you are capable of developing a polyglot applications with GraalVM. A polyglot application is an application that uses more than one programming language in just one runtime. So you can imagine for example that you have a Java Spring application and uh, this Java Spring application wants to invoke some Python script for some data processing and it is very beneficial to have all this in just one runtime and do no context switching and so on. Uh, GraalVM is high performance, I will get to this point later. And currently this is a short list of languages that it supports. Uh, yeah. So I've mentioned that GraalVM is essentially, is essentially a JDK and uh, compared to, for example, OpenJDK, it contains these additional components. Uh, it has GraalVM compiler as default JIT compiler. Uh, the standard JDK has a hotspot C2 compiler as a JIT compiler and the difficulty about this C2 compiler is that it is written in C++ and it is not really flexible. In uh, last recent years there has not been done any major optimization uh, for this C2 compiler. Uh, whereas GraalVM compiler is able to in fact do more optimization than the C2. And what is kind of evolutionary uh, about this GraalVM compiler it is, it is that it is entirely implemented in Java uh, using JVMCI, which is a JVM compiler interface. It is basically a Java API throughout which you are capable of querying some JVM data structures like loaded methods, loaded classes and stuff like that. You are also uh, able to install a compiled code inside JVM memory to this interface. Uh, there is also a component called native image uh, which is a tool used for AOT compilation of uh, Java classes. The AOT compilation stands for a hands of time compilation and what it basically does it's that it takes a bunch of Java classes as input and it outputs just one executable. And Truffle is maybe the most important component. I'm going to talk about Truffle on the next slide. Before I say exactly what is Truffle, let's start with motivation. Imagine that you want to implement some new dynamic language. So for that you need at least parser, you need it right, uh, you need interpreter and uh, you need a runtime library. Uh, the runtime library may be itself written in that new language and the interpreter is usually written in some low-level language like C or C++. These three components are components that you really need in order to have a new language, right? Now, imagine that you want the new language to have some substantial performance. In order to do that, you would most likely implement a JIT compiler. Now, JIT compiler is a very complicated piece of software uh, if you really want the performance of the new language to be good you usually 
would implement the JIT compiler as a tiered compiler, which means that you will have more than one compiler and uh, the compilers on different tiers will use different optimizations. Uh, so all in all, it means that a JIT JIT to implement a JIT compiler is really a lot of work. And also, uh, you usually want to have some bytecode specification for a JIT compiler, right? So uh, if you look at these components that you need for implementing a new language, and if you want the new language to have some substantial performance, uh, you will definitely come to a conclusion that it is almost impossible to, for example, compete with uh, something like V8 and V8 JavaScript engine and stuff like that, right? Well, Truffle uh, is aid for this. Uh, it is a platform for building high-performance language implementation. Uh, I will come to what this means later. Uh, with Truffle, you only have to implement interpreter and parser. And the JIT compiler and the bytecode specification is provided by Truffle. So uh, it is a great tool for uh, language implementers because you have just to implement the interpreter and parser and nothing more. So how does Truffle actually work? Well, I'm not going to dive into details because we do not have time for that. So I'm going just to give you a high level overview of how does it work. Imagine you have a Truffle language implementation, for example, for Python. Now, the Truffle language implementation is represented as a self-optimizing AST interpreter. It basically means that every operation of the language that you want to implement, in our case Python, is implemented as some kind of a node. Uh, technically speaking, there is some kind of a node abstract base class and you uh, you implement some additional node that extends this base class and you implement the semantics of the operation in that node. And now here we can see some AST. Uh, the parser generated this AST and we can see that all the nodes are in so-called initialized state. Uh, so this is just initialized AST and there is something that we call uh, node specializations because if you have some operations they may specialize themselves for different type of operands they see at runtime. So here you have uh, an example of how these specializations may look. So you may have initialized node and from this initialized specialization it may transition into an integer specialization, number specialization, string specialization and for example from the string specializations it may go into generic specialization. Well, uh, let's go back to our example of the addition node. So if we have addition then first the addition is initialized and if at the runtime we encounter two integer operands we transition these nodes into integer specialization if on the other hand we encounter for example double operands we go into double specialization and if for example in python one of the operand is uh, some custom type then we want to look up some uh, plus operator method overall so we go into generic specialization okay uh, now imagine that this subtree these three nodes represent the addition so this node is the addition node 
uh, its left child is let's say a local variable read and this right child is also local variable read so for example this subtree will represent a statement a plus b this will be a read of a local variable a and this will be a read of local variable b okay so first it is initialized then uh, when you read the local variable a you actually find out that this local variable a is an integer and the same is true for the variable b so you specialize these variable read nodes to integer specializations and it means that this addition will also be an integer specialization well and these nodes up here they may be whatever operation you you imagine so that this will be in some kind of generic specialization now imagine that this tree will be stable for a while which means that these specializations will hold for some time and we will still keep reading the variable a and b and they still will be integers and we'll still add them as integers for some time then we will call that this piece of ast is stable and once it is stable we may compile it into machine code so this picture represents a compiled piece of ast now uh, in the whole AST you may have some parts that are compiled and some parts that are not compiled this is perfectly okay uh, you may be here could be an uncompiled node and from this you want to uh, you want to go into a child node and execute it so you switch to a native code which is okay for Java we can do that in Java runtime environment right so well all in all you can have a huge ast and a portion of the ast may be compiled and some portions may be uncompiled of course when you have a compiled part of ast you may also want to throw away this compiled code in case some specialization doesn't hold anymore so for example here we would read the variable b and it would not be integer anymore but it would be double and in such case we need to de-optimize this tree and uh, activate a different specializations and for example after these different specializations will get stable they will be again compiled into native code okay let's see the demo now uh, i will show you a demo that is uh, right from the <coughs> website of uh, ground vm uh, by the way i will not show you how to install ground vm because it is really really simple uh, it's like jdk it's just an archive that you unzip and that's that's everything so uh, the demo application is a Node.js application uh, it is basically just this source file and it shows the interoper interoperability between JavaScript, R and Java so here uh, we just load some, um, some Node modules uh, we will use a Java big integer type so wherever uh, we got a request we'll respond by doing something with java standard library classes here something with big integer and then we will do something in r uh, and finally we'll create a graph in r we actually here we actually want to even load a, an r package inside the r so uh, okay so now let's see how this works uh, I already have downloaded the node modules so uh, let's just start uh, this server
okay uh, the server started and let's see what it will do uh, first it will take some time because it needs to do a lot of things including loading some base R packages and you see uh, this is an output of the R script and here we can see uh, the plot so uh, this is the big integer that is here and then we have some pipe that is from R here we, we see the pipe and finally this uh, this whole plot is originates from this R script so if I refer this and other different plots are you can see different plots uh, and you can also see that it uh, it gets faster and faster uh, so actually this line is an output of this R package load okay uh, and by the way I have not uh, told you but uh, this whole polyglot application is actually just one AST and whenever there is a part of the AST compiled it does not matter from which programming language the nodes originate which means that the compilation happens actually uh, across the borders of the programming language okay so thanks for watching